Welcome to the Cal Coffee Shop. Today we're going to go over principles of knife work. The important thing to remember with a knife is that cuts from a knife are not as effective if you just push down. A knife uses a shearing motion to create a cut. So you don't want to do like this. You want to pull across the cut with your knife and that's going to make a much more effective cut. The other thing you always want to remember is that as you're gripping something for a, for a cut, you want to use what's called a claw. And a claw means that you're pulling your fingers back so that there's the least possible chance of cutting the, the hand that is stabilizing the vegetable or whatever it is that you're chopping. So if I'm going like this, I'm holding my claw and I'm moving my, my claw away from my knife. And I'm always slowing down as I get to the end or the butt of something so that I can be much more careful and less likely to cut myself. Those are the basic fundamentals. Now we're going to go into a few different types of cuts and how to do them effectively. So it's always good to cut something round in half and put the flat side down. This is going to make it so that it's not rolling around as you cut it. It's okay to cut something into a round, but it's going to be less um, safe. So with this potato half, a simple cut is a half moon cut. We're going to go to even thicknesses. What's really important when you're cutting things, especially if you're uh, searing this off in a pan or boiling it, is that it's similar thickness so that you don't have things cooking at different rates. If I cut one piece of potato this thick and I cut another piece of potato this thick, this piece of potato will be fully crispy and cooked through if I sear it in a pan and this will probably still be raw in the middle. So you want to make sure that your potatoes are very similar thicknesses. So this is a, a typical cut here is a half moon cut. I'm anchoring the tip on the cutting board and then rocking the knife up and down using the heel of the knife. And I'm slowly inching the potato towards the knife. You're not moving the knife, you're moving the vegetable towards it. You can rock your knife back, but I tend to like that better. The next type of cut we're gonna go over is a grid cut. So this is very commonly used if you're making a dice. So we're going to take this, we're going to slip it in half here, and then we're going to turn it and we're going to create lines. I'm gripping it on both sides with my thumb and my pointer finger, and I am creating long strips. Then, using the same motion as I did for my half moon cut, I am just going to rock it. And that principle applies the same whether you're doing a quarter inch dice, a half inch dice, a one eighth dice, or a mince. You're creating a grid and then you're just working it out so that they all cut into similar size pieces. Now, one thing we always say at the Cal Coffee Shop is it doesn't have to be perfect. Some people like to make absolutely perfect cuts that are all exactly the same size. I think aesthetically, that means that you have to rely on everything being perfect. But if you make it a little hodgepodgey, it's gonna look more natural on the plate if you make a small mistake. So that's how I like to do my dice cuts. The last cut I'm gonna show you with the potato is a wedge cut. I like to do wedge cuts a lot because they're radial and things in nature are off and round. So what we're gonna do is work with the shape of the potato. We're gonna cut it in half. Then we're gonna cut it in half again. And rather than going straight down, we're gonna use the angle here and mark it. So I'm gonna mark this and say, I wanna cut this into eight pieces. So I'm gonna take halfway here, halfway to the, the 180 degree point, I'm gonna slip it. Then I'm gonna slip it vertically here, and then I'm gonna slip it at an angle here. And what I end up with are wedges. And I like these because they have lots of sides, so you get a lot of crispy edges, and it tends to look more like a potato. You can tell that it once was a potato. The last cut I'm gonna show you is more commonly used with herbs, uh, like mint or parsley or basil but it's called a chiffonade. We've got some spinach here, so I'm gonna show you how to make this. It's great in a salad, especially with herbs, if you cut a chiffonade and toss it in with all your other greens, but the principle applies here with spinach. What you would like to do here is stack all your spinach so that it's lined up on top of each other, and then you're gonna set it down, and stacked on top, you're gonna to go into the smallest possible ribbons that you can. And what you get are these beautiful ribbons that plate really nicely. You've made confetti. 
Um, it works really well with cabbage, uh, kale. You can make these confetti salads, which are, are, are absolutely wonderful. Um, so I really love the chiffonade cut. It's very elegant. And especially if you're plating, you can take something and just spread this over the top of a whole plate and it looks beautiful. So it's a great way to round out your plating and your aesthetic. All right, so that was just a few cuts. There is a whole world of cuts in different kinds, juliennes, fancy types of dicing, but those are the basic cuts that I use 90 to 95% of the time. We'll be using those types of cuts all quarter and with all of our recipes in the Cal Coffee Shop. So if you master those, you'll be able to do everything that we ask you to do in our courses, in our, our recipes, in our instructions. And hopefully this will be a skill you carry forward for the rest of your life. Just always remember to be safe, remember how a knife works, and make sure to use your claw. And if you do that, you'll be able to do almost anything in a kitchen.